The second chapter is connected to the problem statement and all the problem analysis, the diagnosis that should be done in order to gather enough ingredients to formulate properly the research objective. Then is via the problem context, the problem analysis, and later on, of course, the formulation of a problem statement, that we will have enough ingredients to formulate our research objective. And this is indeed the topic for the second chapter in this series of lectures, and also it's the content that you will find in the second chapter of the textbook. How to formulate your research objective? This is the question that we will address during this topic. It's not only about the research objective. It's all the work that should be done before that. And it's also connected, indeed, to the proper problem statement. Essentially, there are two steps to properly elaborate the research objective. First, we need to explore, and then we need to formulate. What is the meaning of the exploration phase? Well, there are certain questions that you can answer. What problems are involved? What is the complexity of those problems? What's the background? Meaning, what's the context? And what are those stakeholder desires? Stakeholder desires that later on you can translate, of course, in technical requirements real technical requirements, thinking as an engineer. Once we have explored sufficiently the problem, we can formulate properly the objective. And here we need to consider elements like time and space. Reality. We need to consider elements of adequacy or simply, is it possible to measure the objective? And how are we going to measure the results once we have achieved the objective? for instance. Let's analyze the first step, exploration. How to reach, indeed, an effective research objective. An objective that is highly connected to the desires and the technical requirements of the system or artifact to be de developed, or the fundamental question that needs to be answered. The exploration phase is the one that sets the problem context, and it highly depends on the type of research that you will perform, whether it's theory-oriented or practice-oriented. Just recall that for both types of research, still you need to do an extensive literature research. For the theory-oriented, there are going to be subjects of discussion. You will look for potential solutions. For the practice-oriented, well, you will have a practical situation, a problematic situation where you will, and you can make use of, of course, of a technique, the why what, the five whys, the five questions, the Chicago diagram, the stakeholder analysis, and we will explore some of those techniques here during these lectures. During the exploration phase, we see how people fail to find effective solutions, or we see how people fail to answer fundamental questions in the theory-oriented research aspect, for instance. Now, there could be different causes for this, not being methodological or lack of commitment or misinterpretation of the problem statement because there was no, uh, no proper diagnosis. There is lack of knowledge from the researcher. So it means that probably some additional information should be acquired, some additional knowledge before starting the project. Probably the method was there, but it was not highly connected to the problem, meaning that also the diagnosis phase was not properly done. And the information is insufficient, the information is inaccurate, and indeed there is no sort of analytical thinking. This, these are some of the causes of not finding properly a solution to a very specific problem. Indeed, one way to tackle this situation is to properly formulate your problem. And to formulate your problem, you need information. To gather the information, you need to make use of tools, tools of diagnosis. And those tools and that diagnosis should be connected to the context, the context of your problem. The capitulation of the exploration phase is a proper problem statement. A problem statement that is connected to the context. It's precisely described in one or two paragraphs. 
and it has the purpose to focus the attention not only of the of the problem owner but also of the one executing the research the individual or the team when you have ill-defined problems means that you haven't gathered all the elements from the problem context so far i have briefly introduced the two main tasks to properly design a research objective exploration and formulation in the follow-up we will explore in depth what is the meaning of the signing a problem statement and what is the meaning of formulating finally the objective